fly shop by yourself mm -hmm. with all the stuff that you have here. My friend Chris designed it. It was called the Chubby Chernobyl. So, Chubby Chernobyl. Um, yeah. So my my little mini claim to fame is I named that fly. Oh my gosh, you're <laughs> killing me. Bueno amigos, aquí estamos junto a Patrick Kilby, que es el encargado de desarrollar todo lo que son las moscas de, eh, de río. Es un catálogo enorme, es un catálogo que tiene una gran cantidad de moscas y bueno, Patrick es el encargado responsable de seleccionar los, los, todos los modelos y encontrarle justamente un destino. Eh, así es que, bueno, te voy a saludar. Hello, Patrick. Can you tell me what is basically the real, the real fly? What's the meaning for the real fly? Mm -hmm. So, if you think about the connection or the, the tagline that Rio uses called Make the Connection. Make the Connection. So, yes. they had everything from backing to fly line to leader, tippet. Yes. They did not have the fly. So really, you couldn't make the connection without the fly. Yeah, right. So adding a fly to that equation allowed us to complete that sentence more fully. And so it made a lot of sense to put flies under the Rio brand. And, uh, and in doing so, now anglers can make that connection. So uh, in 2017, we were working on flies. We had all this locked off. Nobody was allowed back here because we were trying to keep it secret. We were trying to keep it um, a, you know, a competitive advantage, not let our competitors know that we were coming out with flies. And then in the summer of 2018, we had a catalog we could go to market with. We had a warehouse with flies in it, and we were able to go live with flies in 2018. Uh, it started with just Britta and I designing the, the signature flies for Rio. Right. So anything that just says like Rio's Pipsqueak or Rio's you know, shot glass or something like that, any of those flies were designed by she and I. Mm -hmm. So uh, a few years ago, we added other signature designers to the mix. So, you know, Johnny King and Ken Morris and Hogan Brown and uh, Phil Webster, different people that we've added to the mix, Gunnar Brammer and so on. And they bring their patterns to us, but their expertise, their knowledge of their own fisheries, which then just expands our knowledge. How you can um, say that the, a, 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 real, a real fly is, is located? So obviously it's, it's not a regular fly. I mean, it's, it's, it's a fly that has a, a lot to do with the fishing situation, I mean, it's, so a real fly is not a regular fly. I mean, it has a purpose. So it's, there's, some flies are designed to be multi-purpose that are, can be used anywhere, like a general attractor type pattern that you want it to be used in a lot of situations. Then you have very specific niche patterns that are designed for mousing in Alaska or, you know, that type of thing. So you have niche products uh, just like Rio would have a jungle line or a redfish line or something like that, right? So we're going to have flies designed for very specific purposes. Um, and many of the flies that I've worked on or that Britta's worked on come from when we, like if we're going to go on a trip somewhere and we're going to tie for that trip and maybe we've gotten really close on a pattern and we fish it while we're there but then we get feedback from the field, meaning like, hey, it's not quite sinking right, or it's not turning over the way we like, or the guide didn't like the flash in it, or whatever it might be. And then we can come home and finish it. And then now we have this product that uh, is ideal for that fishery. We try to definitely, I mean, we try to stay in touch with the market. So what would all the guides be tying in Florida for tarpon? They're going to tie on the Gamagatsu SL12S short, most likely, the, the black uh, co coated one, or the big game version, which is the tin coat. And that, that hook is proven, that hook is, is well respected, and if we tell somebody our tarpon fly is tied on that Gamagatsu SL12S, 
game over, right? They, they're not even going to question the durability of that hook. So, um, could we save money by tying it on something else? Yes. Yes. But in the end, if people won't buy it, what are you saving, right? So, there's no point in trying to save a few pennies by changing that hook to something sub sub quality. Put it on the right hook, and then you know charge appropriately for it. Now, uh, uh, to usually the customers, I, I mentioned that the most expensive fly is the fly that doesn't have the right hook. So it's, it's basically it's the fly that you miss your fish, you miss your trophy. Okay, Patrick, can you explain, because I can see a bunch of material mm -hmm. from there to there, you are, you are you can you can make almost a fly shop, you can put a fly shop by yourself mm -hmm. with all the stuff that you have here. Uh, it, wh why do you have all of that? You try everything? Uh, not necessarily try it all, but what? why we have it is, let's say, you know, for years I would, I would be tying a fly and I would say, well, I need a flash in it. And based on what I knew, I might just go with the safe one, which is like pearl flash of lure, pearl crystal flash or something like that. Yes. Uh, so I'd order that and get it, uh, or go to the fly shop and buy it. But as we design, I learned that you have all the colors. Like if you want to grab that crystal flash right here, yes. it's midge flash. So, um, you know, we will then just, when we're going to order it, we'll order all the colors. And then now what we can do is have our fly and actually go through it and realize, whoa, smoke blue is a way better color on that fly than the pearl is. The pearl's a little bit too bright. The, the smoke blue picks up those reflections from the sky and the water and, and the body of the fly, and it looks more lifelike. So I'm gonna go with this color instead. And all of a sudden the fly looks like it should, right? It, it's more complete. And um, so by having all the colors and not paying attention to the name and trying to order it out of catalog, you can actually physically see the color firsthand. We can go outside and see it in real light and understand, does it look better outside than in here under the fluorescent lights, right? So I, see. So I, I can then just so have a better have way. You have all the assortment completely. Right. It's just, it's a, it's really helped us in our designing of new patterns to have the, the breadth of colors. Yeah, is it possible to make improvements on a fly that is already effective or? Yeah, I think so. Um, by you doing know, what? Essentially, I'm not, not talking about the particular. By doing what? Yeah. Just making improvements in the color? I just, the I listen to people. I go fishing with people guides, whoever it is, and they might say they're fishing a grasshopper, very well-known grasshopper, and it's people love it. But the guide said something, I wish that fly, if that fly lands upside down a little, uh, a little too much, right? And, and sometimes when it lands upside down, even twitching it, it's hard to get it to flip over, yes. okay? Yes, sir, right. So I, I hear that, and I go home and I'm thinking, I didn't think I could improve that fly. That fly is so good and so well known, but it does land upside down, even when I fish it too, right? So I'm like, he's right. The guy was right. So the hook I chose is a more curved shank, and the way I tie my foam is, there's more metal below the, the yeah, hook. So there's so more weight. The center of gravity has changed. Exactly. And so at the end of the day, as I'm throwing both of these flies into water repeatedly, and I and I can see mine is landing upright 30% more often than the competitive fly, I know I've made an improvement to you know, a similar pattern, right? For sure. So I can then use that as a selling point. What's, what's your opinion about the articulated streamers? Because they are so effective, the good brown trout they were eating big flies, yeah. essentially. Yeah. So, <clears throat> I mean, I have varying opinions about it. I, um, 
I have my personal opinions about hook size and trout. And like, I don't like to go over a certain hook size when I fish for trout because I think it could damage, especially a smaller fish. If they, yeah. if they grab it, they could get injured. Um, I think uh, in, in some states here in, in the country, um, two hooks is illegal. Yes. So you, can, you have to cut but one off. Yeah, they cut one off. Um, needing to know how somebody's going to fish it before I can either make a recommendation to somebody or design for that fishery. So um, then it's about, you know, the main things is movement, the proper kind of movement on the fly, not tangling. Um, and then um, I would say, um, yeah, the hook, hook sizes are the other things, but and then what are they representing? Is it representing a leech or is it representing a minnow or a, um, uh, something, something in between? Yeah. 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 So do you want a fly that swims more up and down jigging style or do you want a fly that might dart back and forth? So all of these are like, you, one, understanding why are they eating? What are they chasing? And what does that swim like? And then let's design a fly that mimics that movement as much as possible. Hey, I'm curious, what, what's the best setting for your fly right now? Mm. Well, it's, uh, it's, not, it's not a fly that we designed. Um, it's one that I, uh, at a previous company I worked at, we, it was designed there. My friend Chris designed it. It was called the Chubby Chernobyl. Chubby Chernobyl, um, yeah. So, my my little mini claim to fame is I named that fly, but by by far the you know, the Chubby Chernobyl is a great selling fly all around everywhere. I, mean, I I think it's such a good dry fly by itself, and uh, and depending on the colors, there's there's ones that are very buggy specific that might match a salmon fly or a golden stone or um, you know a yellow sally, but uh, then. You have like purples and royals and stuff that are just for tractor patterns. Do um, they work all the all, all they work in, in the same? Uh, well, it's well, the time of the year. year, yeah. And so the gold to me is one of the best. But we've done now we've added like a cicada colorway to it. We've done a bumblebee colorway to it that you can use as an attractor. So yeah, there's some fun things we've done with it. Which are your favorite flags? Oh man. Many, yeah, I mean, I think I have some that I... But trout, let's say trout, which, you know, or, or you fish for other species rather than trout. I mean, I do, I fish trout, bass, steelhead, probably those are my most that I go after. Um, but it's hard, to, you know, like, flies that I like the most that I've worked on are the ones that took me the longest to develop. So like a frog pattern I worked on for a very, very long time to make it do what I wanted it to do. And, uh, but from a, just a, a fishing standpoint, and it's hard to say, like... Let, let, let me make it easier for you, all right? <laughs> uh, I got the catalog and I say, Patrick, take one fly, it's one fly, or trout. Only one chance. Oh, man. <laughs> I mean, you not too easy. No. Everything is going to be on the surface. Okay, it has to be a dry fly. <laughs> and it's, so it's a dry fly, and it's my one and done. And I'll I'll take Chubby off the table because we've already talked about the Chubby. No, no, okay. no. Chubby doesn't play. All right. So I'm going to go with. Uh, it's, I'll call it a little cousin of a Chubby Chernobyl, <laughs> but uh, there's a fly called the Tiltwing Dunn, and then there's the Chubby Chernobyl, and I kind of marry the two into a fly called the Skeeter Tot. Ah, so it's, it's a smaller tapered body foam, and it has a little skater lip on it, but then um, I didn't put any legs on it. I wanted it to be very delicate and easy to, to maneuver so I put an elk care wing that's bleached so it's very bright and easy for me to see and then you parachute the hackle around that like a tilt wing done is and that serves as your legs okay 
and antenna and that type of stuff. So uh, it's just a it's a great little attractor dry fly and uh, super easy to cast. And it comes in like your 10 through 16, so it's like the perfect trouty sizes, 14s and 16s being just like easy. So I'll say I'm going to use the black one. It's going to be representative of lots of things, ants, beetles, whatever. Now, the same, but we don't have anything on the surface anymore. Just you have to go down. Okay. Uh, uh, it's a yellow sally nymph that I designed called the yes. Rio's My Gal Sal. And Rio? Rio's My Gal Sal. Okay. So uh, I will fish. I'll, I'll do the 14 again. Um, maybe I'll go to 16. I'll drop it down to the 16. Um, and, and it fishes great as a yellow sally nymph, but it also, I think, doubles as a PMD nymph. Yes. And, uh, and it's just, it's been one of my go-tos. I, I start with it almost any time in the summer no, and fall. Stem, no, tungsten no, it's got a tungsten bead. Ah, it has. Yeah, yeah. yeah, and it's on a jig hook, two-tone, so it's dark yeah, on top, light on the bottom. Yeah. And uh, it's super good. Yeah, it's one of my best that I, I fish all the time. I, I love it. Well, and now there's no small fish. <laughs> <laughs> this you have to put a big round. Oh my gosh, you're <laughs> killing me. Um, when you go to the Lima, the first thing is you have to get it to fly down. I think, I think I'm going with one of Britta's flies called the Precious Metal. It's got a cone head on it. It's got great movement and flash, and um, and I I think. It can, it's just a pretty versatile fly. It's not an articulated one, it's a single hook, which I, I, I gravitate more to single hooks if I can first, and then if I have to go articulated, I do. But, um, yeah, so I'll go with precious metal and the copper. Well, the final question that they have is, uh, or final comment that they have, it's, uh, I was surprised by the, by, by the way, you know, with all the, Catalog, and especially with the conversation that we have. Mm -hmm. But um, what happened with the Dorado flies? It's Dorado. Are you looking for Dorado flies? Yeah, so I would say definitely Dorado is on our list. I know that. I know that you have. You know, articulated streamers being one of those, right? We know we need more of those in our catalog. We're trying to fulfill that, and that's a much bigger market for us than the Dorado flies are currently. And so Dorado flies are definitely on our list but it's just a smaller market for us and we're not there yet. So we're not ignoring it, we've just postponed it for the moment. Can help. I believe you can. I'm, I'm excited to see what, what we can learn from you. And, uh, we have excellent flyers. Uh, Patrick, it's been very nice to talk to you. Me too, I, I read a lot, I, I, I understood many of the concepts that you're using here and I can understand why is you have that it's a lab so full of <laughs> ideas. It's a mess, it is, but resins, yeah. and everything is there. Yeah. So for me, it's I mean it's a mess and both of us I'm I'm yeah. probably messier than Britta, but it's uh, part of it's how my brain works, right? And and I think when you're creative, you're messy, naturally. You're just gonna be messy. You're always trying stuff, you're trying it quickly, you know, and, and you're you don't put everything you. back, <laughs> right? I don't put everything back because I'm in the middle of it. But when it's time to tie my samples, like I've finished a fly and now it's time to tie a sample, I go home and I clear off my kitchen table and I just lay out the materials that I'm gonna tie with. And I have a stopwatch and I time myself and I tie my samples. Because now I, I want them all exactly the same and I want to know how long it's taking me to tie it so that that helps me understand how long it might take the factory to tie it, right, when I send it off. So I, I'm doing it very meticulously and I don't want distractions, so I have the, the lights the way I want, I have the music the way I want, the house is empty, I have the snacks that I want, whatever it is, right? And it's the best time of the, of the day. Yeah, yeah, best time of the day when I'm feeling ready. And 
it's a very different environment. It's very clean, very organized. The opposite of this, right? <laughs> this is for creation. <laughs> That's for. That's the love. Yeah. Thank you again. Yeah, you're welcome. I, have, I enjoy your time and having your conversation. Yeah, likewise. Thanks. Thank you.